The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, City of Bellevue, Washington, on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 37103. Please utilize this five-digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation. Let's start first under the front bumper where you'll find two open-ended tow hooks. Moving up onto the face of the bumper, you'll find a cutout location for your front inlet. Located in the center, you'll find dual siren and PA speakers. Moving to the driver's side face of the front bumper, you'll find dual air horns. Moving up onto the top of the bumper extension, you'll find a tubbed storage location with Velcro tie downs. Over onto the top on the driver's side, you'll find your mechanical siren. Moving up onto the face, you'll find on the outer edge a marker turn indicator arrow and also headlight structure housing low and high beam headlights. High beam will be located on the inside. Just up from that location is your emergency warning lights forward facing. You'll find a grab handle just above the Pierce logo for gaining access to the windshield area. As we move around to the outer edge of the A-pillar, mirror flat, uh, housing a flat and convex mirror, and moving up to the brow of the apparatus, you'll find five identification clearance lights. Located directly in the center, you'll find a forward-facing floodlight, and on the inside, you'll find your Opticom located over the driver's area. Up onto the roof, you'll find your emergency warning light bar. Let's go ahead and take a look at the bumper and extension area. First, a side view where you can see the front inlet. We'll look downward now into the front inlet area. And then over to the center storage location for hose. And then a view from the driver's side. Let's go ahead and move now to the full view of the apparatus on the driver's side. We'll start with the cab section area first. Starting first with your front axle, visual sight gauge indicator, Alcoa wheel. Moving to the front bumper extension, side facing emergency warning light. Moving on to the rear cab wall, you'll find a D-handle gains you access into a storage location. Emergency warning light, side facing at the rear. As we move up to the door area, just in front of the front cab driver door is where you'll find your side facing camera. Also door lock and latch. Grab handles are right next to that location for gaining entry and exit into the vehicle. Directly over the front axle, you'll find your shoreline inlet. This is an auto eject shoreline inlet. Directly above that, when plugged into shoreline power, this will become active, your battery voltage indicator. Also right next to that, you'll find a side-facing emergency warning light. As we move to the rear of the cab wall, you'll find a water level indicator, and above that, an emergency warning light upper zone. Just over the notched areas, you'll find a side-facing scene light. Let's go ahead and take a look at the mid section of the apparatus where your pump house is located. We'll come back to this area, so we'll move to the body section. We'll start at the very front lower section of the body where you'll find a tank drain. Also, you'll find your air tank drains right next to that, and then storage location in front of and rear of the axle for your wheel chocks. Directly in front of the axle is a marker turn indicator light. And above the rear axle, you'll find a lower zone emergency warning light side facing. As we move up to the very top, side facing scene lights. And then to the rear section of the apparatus at the top, you'll find an emergency warning light. Let's move around to the rear of the apparatus, first starting at the very top with an emergency warning light, brake light, turn, and reverse light. As we move up onto the driver's side, you'll find a recessed backup camera and further up emergency warning lights 
and at the very top section, additional rear-facing scene lights. As we move directly above the Pierce logo in the rear, you'll find a two and a half inch discharge. Also in the center, you'll find a third brake light. And moving up to the very top section, you'll find a traffic advisor. Let's move around to the passenger side of the vehicle, full view of the apparatus. Then we'll go ahead and start with the rear section of the body. Same configuration and layout, the difference is you have exhaust located on this side. As we move to the midsection, we'll come back to this area in just a moment, and then forward to the cab section, same configuration and layout. Air inlet on this side and also a side facing camera. We're now into the driver's space. Let's start first with the door panel, affixed to the door panel, safety and warning placard information. Moving up from that location, a combination door latch and lock, electric window controls, and also a grab handle. Let's move down to the base of the floor of the driver's area. Starting first at the base of the seat, this is an indicator for low voltage. Also, this yellow placard we'll discuss in just a moment. Let's first take a look at the low voltage indicator. Moving back to the yellow placard, indicating for the city of Bellevue, Washington, has the date of manufacture, five digit job number, gross vehicle weight rating, and cold tire inflation. This placard also houses the VIN number, all of the fluid capacities for each component, fluid capacity, and fluid capacity type. As we move to about the door hinged area, you'll find the battery switch. This is your master battery switch. And then moving just up from this location is your, on the left hand side, green emergency brake release, which is a protected valve. Moving to the right is your pump shift. There are instructions for its operation from road to pump, and then also from pump to road. Just as a reminder, two green indicators are required, pump engaged, and okay to pump before exiting the cab for pump operations. We also have the ignition start switch, a fan clutch switch, mirror heat and cab lock down not engaged is an indicator. Moving to the opposite side, DPF region inhibit, DPF region and vehicle data recording port. Onto the dash where you'll find your oil, water, trance and also voltage gauge. On the right you're going to find front air, rear air, fuel and def level. In the center, tachometer and speedometer. You'll find diagnostic information will display it on the dash panel. Let's move just to the right of this location for the operator within the cab. General view, we'll start first on the far left with the switch panel at the top, which is going to be your headlight switch, a dimmer switch for the panel, wipers, washer, diff lock, which is a protected switch, and then also the diff lock activated, which is an indicator switch. As we move down onto the next set of switches, you'll find an engine brake on and off switch, settings for low, medium, and high for that engine brake, activate and cancel for the howler, ATC disable, high idle, and an indicator for OK to engage high idle. Located just to the right, you're going to find your Whelan Siren Control Module and PA speaker. You also have a front wheel lock and also a pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release. The front wheel lock is black. The yellow is your rear brake. Moving just to the left of that location is your Allison transmission pad with a note to pump in drive. You'll also find your radio push to talk, SRS fault for your airbag system, and then also your main mirror control dial. Let's move just to the right of this location where you'll find 12 volt access via barrel style. Moving further to the right and slightly down, climate control, heat, air conditioning, and defrost. Unit radio just above a switching panel, which we'll go over next. In the switch panel, we have the perimeter lights, rear flood, driver's side flood, 
front flood, passenger side flood, active air indicator, passenger side windows, driver side windows, and passenger side windows. Those are for your rear crew cab area. Let's move overhead of the operator position, starting on the far left with this yellow placard indicating the height of the vehicle, 10 feet, 0 inches, length 30 feet, 6 inches, gross vehicle weight rating, 48,500 pounds, emergency master, red switch, roof light, front warning, side warning, lower rear warning, and upper rear warning. Just to the right, high beam flash. Opticom, siren brake for your mechanical siren, a siren horn selector switch, load manager, and load manager indicators. Moving further to the right is your traffic advisor. Monitor for your camera system. This is directly over the driver's space. And as we move more toward the center, you'll find your seatbelt information, red indicating someone is in the seat and not belted, green indicating they are belted. Also a do not move your apparatus indicator. As we move to the rear cab portion behind the driver's seat, you'll find an audible speaker for your backup system and also volume control. We're back exterior to the shoreline inlet and auto charge. To the right, you'll also find a block heater. Both of these are auto eject plugs. As we move downward to the front axle, You'll find Goodyear tires, Alcoa wheel, and as we previously mentioned, a visual sight gauge indicator into the center of the axle area. As we move to the rear cab, let's first start with the door panel. A fixed door panel, safety and warning placard information, door lock and latch, window control, and a grab handle. As we move inside the rear portion of the apparatus, you'll find compartmentation lighting with switches for each of those compartments. You'll also find two forward-facing seats on a seat pedestal riser with additional storage just underneath those locations. As we move to the side portion, right and left forward position rear-facing, you'll find an additional storage compartment, adjustable shelving, and also shoreline outlets. Moving to the rear portion of the apparatus, on the rear portion of the engine, you'll find also a charging light box, and at the rear of the engine, daily checks access for your oil and transmission. Behind the officer seat is where you'll find an additional 12 volt outlet when plugged into shoreline power that becomes active. Let's take a general look toward the rear of the apparatus. We'll find two of the forward facing seats, your David Clark headset system, and then also in between the two seats, you'll find 12 volt access via barrel style and USB. On the right and left side of the cab area is where you'll find your SCBA bottle storage location for your packs. Looking overhead just in the front area, we have an additional storage compartment. In this compartment, you'll also find when plugged into shoreline outlets or shoreline plug, this outlet will become active. We're now moving around to the exterior. This is the lower portion of the rear of the cab area. Let's go ahead and move now to the pump panel area. First, starting at the very top section, D-handle gains you access into this storage compartment where you'll find your booster line. And we'll move now to the pump panel starting on the far left with a indicator for low fuel and also an audible speaker for that. As we move down, we do have a pump overheat and also an audible speaker for that. Moving to the left, you'll find your pump intake and to the right side, your pump discharge. These are the two master gauges. In the very center, you'll find your test gauge ports for vacuum and pressure. They're currently plugged and utilized for testing purposes. We'll go ahead and move downward on the pump panel. First, starting with your pump boss, right next to that is an audible speaker. Moving further to the right, you'll find your water tank level indicator. It is the blue module. 
Moving just down from this location is your tank fill. And then as we move up to the very top upper right corner, you'll find the recirculating line and then also engine cooler. These are both twist, not pull. Let's move downward on the pump panel to the next set of gauges where you'll find your deluge discharge gauge. And then just underneath that, you'll find the deluge discharge electric valve control. To the right, you'll find your driver rear discharge. Moving further to the right, you'll find the real discharge, which is the line directly overhead. Moving to the right, we have panel lights, OK to pump indicator, an air horn, which is red, switch, and then also all of additional lights and real rewind. Moving further to the right, you'll find the pump primer, push to prime air. Also, you'll find your cross legs and a warning placard indicating entanglement hazard. Because of those lines coming out, there's the possibility of entanglement. All of our color coded and labeled discharges for two and a half inch. Moving further to the right, a pressure hazard warning indicating caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. Minimum operation maintenance schedule. We'll come back to that placard in a moment. Also, a warning placard regarding fall hazard when climbing on or off the vehicle, always face the vehicle. As we move to the right, you'll find the manual pump shift and then tank to pump and also your large diameter pump inlet. An additional warning placard here indicating that only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment and that's only after proper training. Let's move down to the left where you'll find your large diameter passenger side discharge. This is a wheel valve. Moving further down, you'll find your front inlet. This is an electric electrically controlled valve and then all of our color coded and labeled discharge drains. Let's move just to the right to the double pan door. In this area, you'll find the intake relief valve. Instructions for its operation are on the face plaque. You'll also find your minimum operation maintenance schedule for 150, 200, and 250 PSI. The associated GPM is on the left, and the associated RPM is on the right-hand side. Govern speed while in pump mode, 2,100 RPMs. I'd also like to point out the very bottom section, we do have a free-floating hose storage location in this area with Velcro tie-downs. Just under this area, you'll find the master drain. Also in the same area, you'll find the tank drain for your water tank. And then also right next to it, you'll find the air tank drains. Let's go ahead and move to the next compartment back. We'll find at the very top section a few of the electronic devices. Let's start first with your inverter at the top, air compressor. Just underneath that, you'll have your radio system communications. And then further to the right, you'll find your battery charger. We have a close-up of these items, and we'll talk about this in just a moment. First, let's start at the very top section. On the left is your inverter. To the right is your air compressor. Moving further down, you'll find your communications portion on the left-hand side and then your battery charger just underneath. Underneath the shelf area, you'll find the timer for your air circulation system. Also, you'll find your air shutoff and air outlet valve. Go ahead and move into the next compartment. Just in front of the rear axle, SCBA bottle storage for up to three bottles, one to the rear of this location, and also your fuel door. These do have retaining straps uh, for security. As we move to the very top section, you have an additional compartment. This is directly over the rear axle. As we move to the bottom, Goodyear tires once again, and Alcoa wheel. Uh, moving back up to the uh, right side or rear of the axle, you'll find SCBA bottle storage. Also the silver cap, which is your ultra low sulfur diesel fill location. As we move the door flap in the downward position, it exposes the blue cap, which is your def fill location, which is a 4.5 gallon tank. As we move to the rear of the compartment, you'll find adjustable shelving and LED lighting and your ventilation system. All compartments open now, just a quick look, and we'll move around to the rear of the apparatus. Let's start on the very far left-hand side. At the top, you'll find a recessed backup camera. Moving further down, your rear scene light switch. 
And then as we move toward the center section, additional hose storage. Moving to the very center, a few safety warning placards indicating pressure hazard. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. Also, warning placard indicating fall. Always face the vehicle while climbing on or off. Also, warning entanglement hazard because the line's coming from a loft. There's the possibility of entanglement. An additional warning regarding fall. Never ride on the vehicle while it is in motion. In the compartment, you'll find a release mechanism on the lower portion of the pullout tray. It will lock into position, requiring you to release. As we move back into the hose bed area in the upper right hand corner, you have backboard storage in addition with a storage location on the outer edge. 24 foot and 14 foot ladders, long handled tool storage. Moving now to the upper portion, there are two hose bed dividers to break your hose bed into different sections. As we move around to the passenger side, adjustable shelving, LED lighting, ventilation, and also a through compartment. Moving to the axle or the compartment directly over the axle, you'll find that we do have pegboard located on the vertical surfaces. In this compartment, SCBA bottle storage location, once again with the retaining strap. Goodyear tire Alcoa wheel. I would like to point out extremely hot diesel exhaust temperatures do exist during regen operations. Please be cautious where you choose to park your vehicle. Moving to the next compartment forward, adjustable shelving, ventilation, and LED lighting. We also have 12 volt access in this compartment. We'll go ahead and move to the pump panel area. First, starting at the very top section of the pump panel where the cross lays are located. Identical layout as we have on the driver's side. Also a warning placard indicating pressure hazard. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening. As we move to the far left, this is your large diameter pump inlet on the passenger side. As we move further to the right, you'll find your rewind switch, air horn, and a spare switch. Also large diameter passenger side discharge and then two two and a half inch discharges located just to the right. On the vertical wall to the left of this location is a pan door for gaining access behind the pump panel. At the very base area you'll find all of our color coded and labeled discharge drains. Let's go ahead and take a look inside the door here with the lower portion double swing door. What we'll find here is a switch down in the lower portion. This is the front inlet override. As we move to the forward section, this is the cab lift. There are instructions for its operation, including some danger and caution placard information. We do have a floating tubbed storage location here for large diameter hose and also your front inlet drain. As we move forward to this location to the rear cab, you'll find an additional storage compartment with an adjustable shelf. Now moving inside the cab area, affixed to the door panel, safety and warning placard information, door lock and latch, and a grab handle. Moving overhead, you'll find your David Clark headset system on the rear wall, push on and off red or white lights in the ceiling area. Just underneath the forward facing seats, you'll find a pedestal. That pedestal does offer storage underneath. In addition with rear facing storage locations. As we move around to the forward section, this is directly over the front axle. This is your air inlet filter. Moving just downward from this location is your front wheel, Alcoa wheel, Goodyear tire, and a visual sight gauge for your axle. Now moving into the officer space next, affixed to that door panel on the officer side are safety and warning placard information, your combination door lock and latch, grab handle and electric windows. General view overhead of your apparatus, once again push on and off red or white lens lights. Your vehicle is equipped with a supplemental restraint system, we'll go over that in a moment. Throughout the vehicle you will find these red and white placard indicator spare wiring. It does have the wire job number and the termination type. 
please do not remove these until your maintenance team has had an opportunity to work with them. This is your supplemental restraint system airbag in the front bolster. And then also as we look to the right, you'll find the fill location for your windshield wiper fluid. As we move up, you'll find additional red and white warning indicating spare wire, and then also your mobile data station. Moving just to the left of the officer space, you'll find 12 volt access via barrel style and USB, mechanical siren, and also a radio push to talk. Overhead on the far right hand side, you'll find a reading lamp and also a digital speedometer, additional wiring, for spare wiring, which is behind this panel. Moving to the very top on the far right, once again, digital speedometer. Moving just to the left of this location is your AM FM weather band radio. David Clark headset system with hangers and air conditioning unit. Full view of all compartment doors open now. We'll go ahead and move to the very top section of the vehicle will start with the dunnage and hose bed area. As we move to the outer edges of the hatch compartments, also we have two forward hatch and two rear hatch on both the passenger and driver's side. Hose bed is fully enclosed. On the top of that hose bed you'll find the yellow diamonds indicating the edge of the walking surface. Inside the hatch compartments you'll find LED lighting and dry deck material. As we move to the rear hose bed, you'll find those hose bed dividers. Moving now back to the outer edge toward the rear, this is a hatch compartment, dry deck material, and LED lighting. Moving back up to the passenger side forward section, hatch compartment, and then to the dunnage area we'll find your top fill water location. Moving forward of this location is where you'll find your booster line and also master stream. Let's take a look into this area. First, free tension spool and also a manual rewind in the very front section of the reel. Moving now to the master stream device, you'll find a diamond plate covered portion. This is going to be your electric deluge discharge open and close valve. As we move to the forward section of the cab, this is still considered a non-walking surface even with the diamond plate located on the top. Please be cautious when in this area. That's why we have these warning slip hazards. The next set of images that you'll see are going to be that of the chassis with the cab open exposing the engine. When you have activated the cab tilt and the cab tilt is in the full upright position, we do have a safety bar that should be put into place for your protection. That safety bar is not intended to, to load share the weight of the cab. Please maintain all pressure on both cylinders equally. Also to the rear of the engine, you'll find your power steering fluid reservoir and visual sight gauge. Also to the rear of the engine for your daily checks, your oil and transmission access. Just underneath the battery box on the driver's side is where you'll find your termination points for your jumper cable. Also you'll find in the lower portion of the battery box a reservoir for your hydraulic fill location. This is the reservoir for your hydraulic lift.
This will conclude the images. We do have a video walk around with your emergency lights activated. Congratulations, City of Bellevue, Washington, on your new fire apparatus. If you have any questions, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.